the Mercedes Zeropods are poised to make a return to the Formula 1 grid for 2024. But not with Mercedes, oh no. They're being unleashed by Red Bull, who are going to introduce a more extreme Mercedes-style F1 side pod for apparently the fourth race of the season in Japan. This is a further addition to the already couple of concepts that they have taken from the W13 and 14 and introduced onto their RB20 with now the team going even further along that path by introducing zero pods. This all comes courtesy of motorsport.com who understand this is to be the case. The RB20 has already earned comparison to the Mercedes W14 from last season. This is of course courtesy of them taking inspiration and introducing their more extreme version of the engine cover which features the high waistline and full length gullies which run from the halo all the way back down to the diffuser and beam ring region of the RB20. Away from that, of course, they also have introduced the overbite on their side pods, where the top surface extends beyond the main intake. But motorsport.com understands this design is due to only remain for the hot conditions of pre-season testing and the opening rounds of Bahrain, Australia and Saudi Arabia. Then, as the F1 circus moves itself to Japan in early April, Temperatures are expected to drop and cooling will become less marginal on all the vehicles. And thus, this is when the RB20 will receive their huge upgrade to a design which is reportedly going to be very reminiscent of the Mercedes Zero Pod. Mercedes' theory on their part was that they believe by shrinking the bodywork to increase the surface area of the floor from the new ground effect era, greater downforce could be achieved. Now, no matter how strong the numbers were in the wind tunnel, with perfect controlled conditions, when the car was moved out into the real world, the surface and the bumps across all the circuits just didn't allow the team to be able to optimally run their car. This was particularly a huge problem that the team faced in 2022 when they could never get a handle on the bouncing or as it was commonly referred to in that season the porpoising effect with Lewis Hamilton in particular at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in Baku having to almost be helped out of the car and he had serious back pain from that race. But where Mercedes failure is is somewhere Red Bull as a team believe they will not encounter. And I believe the reason for that is they have the utter confidence in their front and rear anti-dive suspension. And with that should be able to negate all the negative aspects that were induced by running such a radical concept. One of the most important areas of the RB19 that made it so successful was the front and rear suspension and that has been retained for the RB20 with a pull rod layout on the front and a push rod at the rear albeit with slight alterations of the geometry and if anything it looks like the push rod inboard end is further forward and the upper wishbone inboard front pickup is just that little bit lower than on the RB19. This is a particular area that a lot of the teams have been studying and have now introduced their own version of on all their cars. Essentially, they want to minimize the lift at the rear of the car while under braking, so they can keep the floor of the RB20 as low to the ground as possible. When braking, the change in pitch shifts the application point of the downforce forwards. The front ring gets closer to the ground, producing more downforce. This is evident on the onboard camera shots that we get of the front ring from race weekends. The floor slash diffuser lifts, potentially reducing its downforce. And as a consequence, the car might become unstable during braking. The car then enters the next phase of the braking, which is the driver is now entering the corner and the static pitch angle rip-ristinates. The car's rear tyres are again pushed 
more towards the ground than the front, causing understeer and slow turning, the exact opposite of what we want. And this is where Red Bull's anti-dive system comes into play. Essentially, at the front with their new suspension, the inclination of the wrist bones is peculiar as their extension intersects just below the center of mass. This way, only a part of the load transfer produces pitch. Thus, the car remains flat under braking. The problem for Mercedes, if we go back to them for a second, was during 2022, they didn't have the suspension layout in the manner in which they needed it. And on top of that, they didn't even have any sort of resemblance of anti-dive on their car. Hence why from the first lap in pre-season testing, they were bouncing all over the place like a yo-yo. Whereas when Red Bull went out to the pits for their first lap, they were smooth sailing and never had to look back and instead were able to focus their resources and attention on just increasing the performance of the vehicle. For Mercedes, it was the complete opposite. They had to get a handle on the porpoising before they could even begin to think about how to extract performance from their car. And this was something they struggled with throughout 22. And in 2023, they went too conservatively in the other direction. So all in all, the Red Bull and the RB20 looks to be an extreme revision of their already hugely successful design concept for the last two seasons. They've now introduced aspects from other cars that they thought were intriguing and could be of benefit for them, which is why we've seen the likes of the overbite on the side pods and the newly revised engine cover. What remains to be seen is what some of the other areas on the car are going to be looking like and what their aims will be because we never saw the floor on the RB20 during the launch and the nose as I've just mentioned I do not believe will be the final iteration come testing. So all these things that we have yet to see are going to be really interesting once they are revealed in how they interact with the rest of the vehicle of course. And with testing over just under a week away now, well, roughly how many days have we got left? Two, four, four days away. We don't have long to wait until we see the real RB20 in action. Right, guys, thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, leave a like and I will see you all next week.